Hi there, friends. I'm Yolanda with Harper Therapy. And um, gosh, it is a gorgeous day. <laughs> I was so excited when I woke up this morning and realized um, that the weather was so amazing. And um, I hope that you have been able to go outside and enjoy it a little bit. I had Toby and Hobbs at the dog park this morning and we just hung out um, and they ran around and played with their dog friends and I got to meet some new human friends. Um, and then we, we all sat outside for lunch today. So ah, this is why we live in Florida, <laughs> days like today. Um, I wanted to come on. Um, one of our community members asked recently um, if I should, could share some tips about sleep and how to uh, get good sleep. I shared that one of my comfort wisdom um, activities, um, one of those self-care activities that I um, have come to recognize and prioritize is sleep and getting um, adequate sleep. And for me, that really means... Um, at least eight hours. Um, and that, that kind of came to me over a period of time. Um, I think most of us tend to uh, not recognize that we need sleep. Uh, our society has gotten really good at um, busyness and doing things other than sleep. So it took me a little while to recognize that not only do I need sleep, but probably eight plus hours, um, if I really am honest with myself. So I wanted to kind of sh just share some thoughts and some tips about how to get um, how to get adequate sleep. So some of them are gonna be practical tips and then some of them are gonna be some kind of deeper tips. Um, so the first one is to exercise. And this is one of those things that we've talked about quite a bit um, in our time in talking through anxiety because sleep and anxiety are really closely linked to one another. If we are not getting good sleep, then our nervous system becomes dysregulated. We have a greater tendency to have feelings and symptoms of anxiety. Um, if we're feeling anxious, then it's harder to get a good night's sleep because of our brain spinning and like that zippy, buzzy energy feeling that can come along with anxiety. So really a key component um, to address both of those things, this is a two for one tip, is that exercise that we've talked about. So move your body, whatever that looks like, whatever works best for you, uh, whether it's taking the dogs for a walk or um, doing yoga rollerblading, right? Um, whatever it is that works for you to move your body, to release some of that anxious energy for one, um, to release those feel-good chemicals for two, but then also um, exercise is going to help fatigue your body physically and help set you up for sleep. So that is uh, tip number one. Um, tip number two is pay attention to things like um, caffeine. So uh, I have realized as I've gotten older, especially that I really have to cut off my caffeine intake as far as like coffee drinking earlier in the day. I'm a huge coffee drinker. I love my coffee. Um, and now that really is confined to morning hours. Um, I really try to limit um, coffee drinking um, in the afternoon, anything after lunch. But we need to pay attention to other foods and drinks that caffeine is in uh, because that's going to um, have a real likelihood of disrupting our sleep too. Alcohol is one of those things that a lot of times people will use because um, initially it might make you feel groggy and sleepy. Uh, the challenge with using alcohol to help with sleep is that our body really processes alcohol as a poison. So initially the, um, the experience with alcohol is grogginess and sleepiness, but as your body processes the alcohol, there's that rebound and then you're awake. <laughs> so it ends up undoing uh, kind of the benefit that you might've gotten uh, from drinking the al alcohol to begin with. Another thing that we need to pay attention to is our screens. Like they are so much a part of our life. Um, I know Apple with its recent update has, has been giving me um, my report for what my screen time has been in. 
that has been an eye opener for sure. It's something that is on my radar to address. Um, but especially before bed, we need to pay attention to the fact that our screens, uh, the blue light from the screens are very stimulating to um, our brains. And that's going to keep us awake at night too. So pay attention to that. Um, another thing that's going to set you up for success uh, as far as sleep is to have that consistent bedtime. Uh, whatever that is, that is going to be an indicator for your brain and your body that it's time to unwind. So it might be your favorite PJs, your uh, fuzzy socks. Um, I get in my, into my PJs, I wash my face, brush my teeth, those kinds of things. Um, maybe you take a nice warm shower, maybe you have a cup of tea, um, maybe you use your favorite um, um, essential oils. So whatever that process is, um, that is going to be a routine that helps you, uh, help set you up to relax and start getting ready for bed. So those are some of the practical tips, um, then you can use technology to benefit you. So a lot of us now have um, a fitness watch or a smart watch, um, and I really have used that to monitor my sleep, to help give me some information about um, some of the things that I might try that might uh, help my sleep, some of the things that are not helpful for my sleep. And then the nice thing is, is that you can um, kind of log on to the app for your smartwatch or your fitness watch and say, hey, if this is the time that I want to get up in the morning and this is the amount of sleep that I want to get, then can you set me um, a reminder for when it's time for me to start getting ready for bed? And ideally, you probably want to set that um, reminder 30 minutes or an hour uh, before you should be unwinding for the night um, so that you can start that routine so that your body and your brain has a chance to unwind and relax. So that is um, one way that we can use our technology to benefit us when it comes to sleep. My final tip is the hardest one. I have, um, I've noticed for myself and when I talk to people about sleep, this is the most challenging tip and that is boundaries uh, with ourselves. And just recognizing, again, our need for sleep. Um, if you are routinely getting five or six hours of sleep a night and you think that that is adequate sleep, I really want to challenge you to kind of pay attention to those times that um, maybe your routine is a little bit different during vac vacation and what have you. Um, what does your sleep look like during those times? Um, is the five or six hours leaving you groggy headed? Is it leaving you irritable? Um, because what I found was um, in thinking that I needed six or seven or what have you hours or not recognizing that maybe I could benefit more for eight from eight plus hours, not that I get that every night, but that's kind of a goal, um, is that I started to realize like how that little sleep put me in a place where I was outside of the person I was striving to be. I was more irritable. I was not able to think clearly. Um, I was actually less productive, even with longer waking hours, than I found myself to be when I do get a good night's sleep. So pay attention to um, those things and really get honest with yourself about the amount of sleep that you need, um, how your lack of sleep is impacting you and the people around you, and what you can do uh, to set yourself up for getting the sleep that you really need. Um, and that a lot of nights means that I have to put limits with myself on um, some of the other things that I want to do, like catch up with my, you know, favorite Netflix show or uh, read a book. So last night I was, I don't read a lot of fiction, but I found a fiction book that I'm really enjoying. And um, I was reading that last night um, before bed and I really found myself wanting to stay up a little bit longer um, so that I could keep reading my book. And I really had to like remind myself, you know, you can come back, you can circle back and read the book another time. Right now it's time for sleep. Um, so I have found for myself that the boundaries with myself is the hardest part, but that's where things kind of unravel for me. 
Um, and for a lot of people, when it comes to, you know, how do I get enough sleep? Um, the chores, the work, the Netflix shows, the books, um, those are still going to be there. <laughs> and um, so it's being honest about that and recognizing that there's a time and a place for those things. And there's a time and a place for getting the rest that we need, um, which is going to help with our mood, with anxiety, um, and with allowing us to be the person that we're striving to be. So um, my kind of 101 tips for um, how to get good sleep if you have some tips that work for you um, that we didn't cover, I would love to hear those so that I could add those to my repertoire of tips to uh, help people with sleep. So drop those in the comments. Otherwise, um, you can give us a call for additional tips on things that are helpful for anxiety. Sleep is a key component of that, um, but there are lots of other things that we can help you with as well. I hope that you are enjoying this beautiful day and um, we will catch you uh, soon. Everyone, good one.